Welcome back. This is Dan Havey with CF Ninja Hacks, and today we're going to continue talking about ClickFunnels 2.0. And in particular, we're going to talk about the page structure inside of here. There's uh, some confusion as to what pages mean what, how do they function together, how do they work together. And so what I want to do is go through and try to demystify that a little bit to kind of explain how everything works together. And once you see it, you'll really understand and it It'll be very simple for you to figure out. So a couple things we have to understand here is there's a lot of the use of the same words or different words, more accurately, different words meaning the same thing. So in here, they talk about workspaces. They also talk about funnel hubs. You got uh, Mike and AJ down here talking about funnel hubs. And then if you come over here, you can click on this. We got site and funnels. And so we got the word site here as well. So you got basically site, workspace, and funnel hub all meaning the same thing. And what they really mean in some ways is they mean, and think of it in this, these terms right here, think of it as a WordPress blog. So I got myself a little graphic over here and all I'm saying in here is a site equals a workspace equals a blog equals a hub. All of these things here can really kind of be used interchangeable to describe the whole entirety of your your site because again think of this in terms of WordPress and again just purely for what you're looking at on the screen here the site overview the workspace think of it in these terms it is a wordpress blog but even though it's not wordpress but think of it in those terms it's a wordpress blog it is a single entity it will have a singular uh, domain name for that entity and inside of that blog what do you have you have different pages you will have a home page a lot of times you'll have an about page you might have category pages tag pages author pages mission pages whatever you want to call it you can make as many pages as you would like inside of your blog but again in your blog they will all be on the same domain they'll just have different paths on them indicating the name of the page and then what else do you have inside of your blog you would also have blog posts so inside of your blog again you start off with a home page which is what you're actually looking at right here on the screen this is the home page of your blog think in those terms and then inside of there you will have your different pages like i said your category pages your about page and, and things like that your page for reviews your page that'll reach out to your blog content all that kind of stuff and then of course you will have your blog content your blog posts as well if you're writing posts every day or if you're putting up videos or a podcast or something like that you will create a whole bunch of posts to go inside of that blog as well so you have that entity that is the blog or the workspace or whatever you want but then you also have two other entities that still live inside of here and you can build them inside of here but they are not necessarily connected inside of the blog they are not necessarily part of the blog they are other pages that we can build so i'm talking specifically about funnel pages and about course pages. So you can create different membership courses in here, you can create different funnels and different funnel pages in here, but they're not necessarily part of the blog because the funnel pages in particular can have their own domain. So you got your main domain for the blog and then you have other domains that you can use for your funnels and then the whole idea is you link from your blog or your hub your funnel hub as mike and aj call it but you're going to link from that hub out to your other funnels and you can also link it out to these other pages that you are going to create in here as well so as we see on the front page here we see site we have blog we have funnels we have pages and we have courses and again if we look over here what i have here so we have site 
Okay, that actually, when you click on site here, it doesn't do anything at all. So that's not really, it's kind of more of a heading there than anything else. Then below that, we have the link for our blogs. And the only thing that's in there is that's where you create your posts. Again, think WordPress. You're going to come in here and you're going to build a post just like you would or very similar to how you would have done it inside of WordPress. And then the next one down, we have our funnels. And if we go into our funnels, this is where you will create your funnel as an, enti as an entirety. So here we're going to come over here. We're going to say create a funnel. We're going to create a new funnel. And you can see inside of the one I have right here, we have three steps now inside of this funnel or three pages. Uh, think in terms as, as we're talking here, that's three funnel pages I built inside of this particular funnel. And then we have, let's just come down to courses first. So then here you can come in, you can create a new course. I haven't created any yet, but again, similar to a funnel, you're going to start off by creating a course, then you're gonna create all the lessons and all the content and everything that goes inside of the course. And then let's look back here. So now we're gonna get into pages. And when you get into the pages, you're gonna see there are four different types of pages or categories that they can be put into. One is your standalone pages, and those are pages that you could build for any reason that you want. So I can build a page and I could have somebody, I can uh, have somebody on a funnel somewhere and I can drive them to this page for whatever reason. It isn't necessarily part of your blog, but it will be using the same domain name as your blog. It's not directly associated to your blog because the site pages are the ones that are directly associated to your blog, and I'll show you that in a minute. Um, but it, but they are just standalone pages that you can use for whatever purpose you may want. Then we have theme pages, and that's exactly what they are. Is they're just theme pages. You can go in there, you can pick a theme, you can clone it, you can modify it, and when you do that, it will then be added to the standalone pages. But again, if you want it associated with the blog itself, then we'll show you how to change it to a site page, and this will all make sense in a few minutes. But then we also have another tab for funnel pages inside of there and the funnel pages are the actual pages for the funnel that we created and you'll see when we get there that I have three pages now the beauty of this is that means that I can build five different funnels and let's say every one of those five funnels I have an OTO that's absolutely just killing it and so I can reuse that funnel page because they're separate you got the funnels, but you got the funnel pages. So they are together, yet they are completely, uh, well, yeah, they're together, but they're also individuals and you can use them anywhere you want. So let's go in here and let's take a look at the pages because this is where people have their confusion. So here we start off with standalone pages and I got a whole bunch of basically test pages in here at this point. And you can just come in, you can edit one or you can create a new one, add a new one. It'll just open up the editor. You'll go in there and you'll create yourself a new page. Then, like I said, you have your theme pages. And again, the standalone pages, you can use those for anything you want. You don't have to use them at all. You can completely delete them out and never use a single one. Okay. But then we also have all of these template pages. So you may want to come in here and go, okay, I, I need to work on a, let me see here. There should be one in here for a blog page. Example, blog search, no, example, blog post template page. Okay. So here's an example blog post template page. I can come in here and in my case here, I would just clone this one. And then after I cloned it, I would go into the editor. I would design it out the way I wanted it to. I'd change the name of it, all that kind of stuff. And then I could use that somewhere else. So then I, I would change the name. And then after I said, after we save it, then what it'll do is it should go into the standalone pages at that point. Or if you don't want to use any of the themes, you don't have to. But you can go in there, you can look at them, you can see what they got, get some ideas from them, and then just come into the standalone page and just build it as is. Because as you know, there's also all kinds of already pre-built templates for sections and rows and stuff inside of the editor. So you can just use those in there as well. 
But then we have here site pages, and you see here it's a particular bunch of site pages that I have specifically said I want those pages associated with my blog. So I actually pin them to my blog. And how you do that is you come over here. I'll show you, I'll show you a couple of different ways to do this, but we don't want to clone it. We want to edit this. So we got my About Dan page. And what you do is you come in here and let me see, where do we do that here? Actually, it is not, that's right. It is not on this page that we do that. Um, so let me finish up in here first and I'll show you where it is. And then here we have our funnel pages. So here we have those three funnel pages. If you recall, I had my funnel over here and it said I had three steps right there. Well, these are in here. These are my three steps, my three pages. And like I said, because they are in here and they are independent of the funnel, they can be used in any other funnel that you want to put them into. I'm not quite sure exactly how you would attach it at this point, but I know that that is the plan and how that's supposed to work. In fact, let's look at this and let's edit this and see what we got here. We got the name of it. We got our different paths. We got our style guide. We got our SEO. So like I said, I'm not exactly 100% sure how you import that into a funnel yet, but by the time we get around to doing some funnel training, I will be able to show you exactly how you pull that in. But this is where they're going to live once they have been created. So now let's go back to a standalone page and I will show you how you associate it then with a site page. So we're going to click on the standalone pages and we're just gonna go into our demo test page here and let it uh, pull up here in a bit. And so now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna come over here and we're gonna say edit the page. We're gonna click on this and we're gonna just come over here and pin this page to site pages in the editor. Okay, so now we're going to pin that to the site pages and we are going to update the page. And now it took us into the editor, which we don't need to be in the editor, but it's good because look at where we ended up here. We did end up in the editor, but we did not end up in the standalone page editor. We ended up in the site editor. So again, think in this terms here, we ended up in the blog page editor. So we got our home blog pay or our home page for our blog. We have other things here. This one says blog home, even though that, uh, that's probably not what I'm thinking it is. Uh, but either way, all these down here, I pinned to the site page. So we can look at our editor here. I can turn this off and I can update the page. And what it should do is, yeah, so now it's, it kicked me back here to the standalone pages. So any one of these in here, I can say, okay, I want to pin this to the site page. And as soon as I pin it to the site page and I update it, what we're going to do is we're going to get kicked into the site. We're going to get kicked into the blog, think in those terms. And then it's going to be right in here. And we can take this back out again, but I won't do that quite yet because we're going to come up here to the home page. So it says site theme pages. The home page up here is actually the home page. So this one right here, that page is the one that shows on the very front here when we first log in. So where it says site overview, this page here was the home page that we were just looking at. And if you click on customize, it will take you in here. And again, we have all of our sites here. We're going to take this one out. We're going to go there. And then, so we're in the site pages now. And now it's going to kick us into the standalone pages. So the only difference between a standalone page and a site page is you actually went in there and you said, take the standalone page and actually attach it, pin it to the site pin it to your blog essentially and then you would go in there and you would create like you got here you got some examples here you got your reviews page you got your content hub your mission statement resources programs about the program about who who you are and all that kind of stuff so all that is in here and it can be pinned then to the blog in terms of in, in those kind of terms but does it really affect it the answer is really no 
because again, they're still standalone pages. The only really good part about pinning it like that is that when you come in here and you are working on your blog and you do have your about page and you do have your category pages and all that kind of stuff, if you pin it to the site, they will all show up right here. So you know that when you're working on your blog, everything will be right in here. And then of course, when you want to create more blog posts, you will pop out and you'll come in here and you will create the blog posts. And then those will of course, again, be dynamically updated and then put into the pages that you built where you want your blog content to appear. So I hope that de demystified um, a lot of the concerns and, and issues people are having with the pages. So if you got any questions, just let me know.